Good morning, good morning, and welcome to uh, the second Sunday of April 2020. Happy Resurrection Sunday, amen, to all of the believers around the world and to those that are uh, yet on the way to believing, amen. We celebrate today the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. What a privilege and an honor it is, amen, to be alive, to be breathing, amen, and to be celebrating, amen, the resurrection today, amen. This is uh, lesson number seven from our Sunday School this quarter. Amen. Today's lesson is the resurrection hope. Amen. We're, our scriptural text is 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. We'll be looking at verses 1 through 8, 12 through 14, 20 to 23, 42 to 45. It may seem like a lot, but my God is so good. Amen. Uh, it's so good. It's exciting. Amen. This is your recap from the lesson. Uh, Sunday school's been taught all over the land, uh, many on Zoom and our uh, Sunday school team this morning. Fantastic job, Sister Joy Greer. Shout out to you who led the adult class and to Minister Jones who led the youth, uh, youth and young adults, amen, this morning in Sunday school. Amen. Sunday school is the greatest school in the world. Amen. Resurrection hope. This uh, lesson today coming from uh, the Apostle Paul's writings uh, to, his, to the uh, church at Corinth coming from the uh, first book of that passage. I'm going to lift out a few of those verses, um, not reteaching the lesson, but just hitting the high points. Amen. The uh, first verse in the lesson says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. My God, what a powerful uh, lesson this morning. Uh, this is a reminder to uh, the Apostle Paul talking to the church there, a reminder to them, but it's a reminder to us today. No matter how long you've been with him, and man, no matter how long your, uh, your, your walk with God has been thus far, every one of us needs to be refreshed, to be reminded. The Apostle Paul does that to the church, uh, for the church at Corinth. He says to them, understand, if you don't believe this, then everything that you've been taught is now in vain. It, it's worthless. It has no value. You have to believe the gospel and take it at its worth. You have to believe the gospel to be the truth. Amen. Gospel means good news. The good news is that Jesus came to eradicate sin. He was the answer for sin. He came to wipe out the sins of the world. Amen. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain even before the foundations of the world. Amen. The fourth verse says, let's see, let me go back to the, the third verse. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which also I, excuse me, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And then, now understand, first of all, let me say this. The apostle Paul was um, he was not one who personally walked with Jesus like the uh, 12 apostles, uh, those disciples, Peter, James, John, and Bartholomew, and uh, Mark, Matthew, Luke, and uh, John. We'll find that he didn't physically walk with those uh, disciples at the time that Jesus was on earth doing his earthly ministry, but Paul was around at the time. He was around at the time. His name was Saul. And he was a persecutor of the church. He was a persecutor. Paul is one, he's a man of great conviction. Um, there's some of you who, uh, you know, when you were out there, you were out there. Uh, when Paul was out there, he was out there. But when he came in Christ, he was in Christ all the way, all the way in. And so while he was out there persecuting the church, amen, he was doing what he thought was right. He was doing what he thought was good. Amen. He thought that the message that Jesus was preaching was uh, false. But he had an encounter with him on the Damascus Road, on his way, amen, to do some more damage to the church that Jesus was building. And uh, this is after the resurrection. The Apostle Paul tells us that he had an encounter with Jesus, knocked off his beast, blinded, amen. And he heard a voice, amen, speaking from heaven, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Don't you know that it's hard to kick against the pricks? Paul's conversion happened after Jesus had died, was buried, and resurrected. 
But the importance of our lesson today is to know that even though he was not there when Jesus went to the cross, amen, Jesus went to the cross for him also. He believed even after the fact. And he says to them um, that the, 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 what they had heard, what they had been taught, what they were convicted of, he says, it's the, the, don't turn back now. You're, all, you're in this thing. Don't turn back now. If you were convinced and convicted then, amen, understand that that was the truth that pierced your soul. It was the truth. When the truth becomes reality to you, amen, your whole life is different. It's changed. Uh, let me mention this. His audience here, uh, as we look here, uh, at the resurrection hope. The early church was comprised uh, majorly of uh, Jews that had been converted from Judaism to Christianity. The challenges that Paul faced with this is uh, at that time, the Jewish uh, community was divided into uh, ma uh, really uh, two sects. That would be the Pharisees and the Sadducees. The Pharisees were ones who believed in life after death. They believed in uh, the resurrection. They, they didn't have a problem uh, being convinced of Jesus being raised from the dead uh, as much as the Sadducees. The Sadducees, Sadducees were not convinced. They did not believe that it was possible uh, to have life after death. Their thinking was, once you're dead, you're done. Once you're dead, you're done. Uh, but Jesus comes with a message, listen, I'm dying that you might live again. Amen, that you might have life and have it more abundantly. There is a life after this. Um, there's a place prepared for those, my God, those prepared people. Amen, glory to God. So he's talking to them. He's got two um, audiences here uh, that, that he's trying to convince to merge together and to become one. He's preaching the same message. All of them uh, believe that Jesus came, that he died, and that, that he uh, rose again. Uh, except for this one group who uh, didn't believe in the resurrection. Uh, the Apostle Paul uh, takes painstaking effort in reiterating and explaining to them again, reminding them that if you don't believe, uh, if you only believe part of the gospel, if, if you don't believe all of it, uh, then, then you're guilty of uh, not believing any. Partial belief is disbelief. My God, take it all. Uh, we find Ezekiel saying, eat the whole roll. The eighth verse says this, And last of all, he was seen of me also as one born out of due time. I skipped over a few verses here. He goes through all of those who saw him, Cephas, and then um, he mentions the, the 500, above 500 that saw him, and then uh, the other apostles that saw him, James and, and those. And then he says, of last of all, he was seen of me. I had a personal encounter with Jesus Christ. That is our greatest testimony. It doesn't matter uh, what grandma's walk was with God, with grandfathers, parents, aunties, uncles, and those. Amen. You have to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. A personal relationship. Paul was convinced because even though uh, he, he knew what Jesus was doing and what he was teaching, uh, it did not become real to him. It did not come alive to him. He was not convinced until he had an encounter with him for himself. And then he explains to them uh, some really deep theological uh, information here. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, this is the 12th verse, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. You can't take part of this. You have to take it all. You have to believe everything, amen, that Jesus did. 14, and if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith also vain. If you don't believe it all, you don't believe any. Leave it alone. You're either cold or hot. Amen. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. 21, for since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. It was important that Jesus fix what the first man did, Adam. Adam 
uh, by Adam came death into the world when uh, he fell. Then there was a need for man to be reconciled to the Father. How can he be reconnected back to the Father? It was a man that caused the, that, that caused the interruption, caused the break, so it's also a man that causes the reconnection. He came in the flesh. Amen. Oh, the 22nd verse. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Another chance. Jesus came to fix what was broken. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, that's a good place to give him a praise. <laughs> oh, the resurrection from the dead, amen, is um, shown. Listen, so also, this is uh, verse number 42. This is the, um, the third phase of, uh, of the uh, scriptures that we have today. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in corruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. And I'm going to read 44 and 45. This is bless my soul whenever I read it. The word of God speaks for itself. Glory to God. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. It's not hard to believe that there's a natural body because you're in one and you, you, you can touch and you can feel and you can see and uh, you have the experiences of the world. But understand that there is a spiritual body. There's another body that is prepared for us. Glory to God. A body that has been changed. Amen. Sown into corruption. What was sown into corruption is sown in incorruption. Freed. Washed. Cleansed. My God. And then the 45th verse and this is where I'm closing. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Hallelujah. Being in Christ means that we too are being raised to a quickening spirit. We are spiritual beings having a natural experience. Understand what that means in the world, but not of the world. We are not, uh, can, the, the world systems and the way that the world operates does not dictate or control, my God, these spiritual beings. We are not of this world. So there's some things, my God, that you might have to deal with in the flesh, glory to God. But when it comes to spiritual things, when it comes to life, my God, that is life eternal. We will be changed, caught up to meet him in the air. That's for another lesson. But thank God for the resurrection hope this morning. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.
I was preaching a sermon one Sunday, and I, it was about, it was the parable, it was talking about the, um, the disciples and Jesus when they were going through a cornfield, and they began to pick the corn, and the Pharisees, the legalistics of the day, they came, and they were chastising them, that why are you doing this on the Sabbath? And they had this whole discourse and dialogue between the two of them. And Jesus was saying, listen, do you, do you not remember that you, you yourself aren't even worthy? You guys bake unleavened bread on, on the Sabbath, and you kill the sacrifice. You clean the sacrifice. You, you, look, they, they have a need, and it's my job and my responsibility to meet their need, and I met their need. I trump the synagogue. I trump the Sabbath. I was, I, I was preaching a sermon one Sunday, and I, it, was about, it was the parable. It was talking about the, um, the disciples and Jesus when they were going through a cornfield, and they began... Lord, everybody, hallelujah, the Lord is indeed worthy of our praise, hallelujah. Can we just take a moment right now and just begin to give him glory? Father, you're a great God, hallelujah, thank you for dying on the cross for us, hallelujah, that we may have life and have it more abundantly, hallelujah, hallelujah, we praise you, we glorify you, hallelujah, hallelujah. There's no God like you, hallelujah. We praise you, oh God. We lift you up, oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Your name is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You are our chief cornerstone, hallelujah. Hallelujah, you're the song that the builders rejected. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We praise you. We praise you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to open with a song this morning. Hallelujah. It says, At last and deep my Savior bleed and did my sovereign die. Would he that sacred head for such a worm as I 
Come on, everybody, sing it right here. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart, they rolled away. Oh, it was there by faith I received my sight. And now I am happy all the day. One more time, the chorus, one more time. At the cross, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burdens of my they rolled away. Oh, it was there by faith I received my sight. And now I am, ooh, I'm happy all the day. One more time, last time. Oh, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. And the burdens of my heart rolled away. Oh, it was there by faith I received my sight. And now I am happy all the day. circumstances, our situations, Lord, knowing that you are yet in control of everything, God, we say thank you. We say thank you for life today. We say thank you for a risen Savior today, God. We say thank you, Lord, Lord, because we yet love you, God. Lord, we ask that you have your way, Lord, in the midst of everything that we are dealing with in this world, Lord God. Death everywhere, God. But Lord, you yet live. You yet live in us, God. And Lord, we say thank you today, God. Lord, we ask that you bless this service on the day, God. Lord, we ask that you will bless our pastor with a word from on high today, God. Strengthen him, God. Strengthen every heart under the sound of my voice today, God. Everyone watching, Lord, touch him right now, God. Oh, God, encourage every heart right now. Remove the doubt right now, God. Touch him, God. Heal every heart right now, God. Mend every heart right now, God. Lord, we thank you, God. We praise you, God. We honor you, God. We love you today, God. In Jesus' name, have your way, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.
scripture reading will be coming from Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 3 in the King James Version. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found a stone rolled away from the sepulcher. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody. While you're sitting in your living room, while you may be still in your bed, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want everybody to just put your hands together. Hallelujah. We're going to celebrate our risen Savior. Hallelujah. Simple song that says right here. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Come on, one more time. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. One more time, say it. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. Hey, I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Here we go. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My death you pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My death you pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Everybody, let's go to the top. Everybody sing. Lord, I lift. Lord, I lift your name on. Come on, I want to hear y'all sing it. Lord, I love. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you came to save us. One more time. Lord, I live. Lord, I love. I'm so glad. Hey, I'm so glad you came to save little old me. I'm so grateful, so I say, you came from heaven. Yes, you pay from the cross to the grave, to, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I live one more time. Oh, you came from heaven, heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My death, you pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I live the name of From the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Come on, just join in, Lord. I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Oh, Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch. Are you and me that's love that's love they hung him high hey. they stretched him wide for in three days again. that's love hey. that's love 
overcome. They hung, they hung him high. They dressed him white. He paid for me. He died. That's love. Yeah. That's love. One more time. They hung his head. They dressed him white. Hung his head. Hey, for me. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Just take a moment right now and begin to thank him. Hallelujah for the great sacrifice that he made towards us. Hallelujah. Come on, praise him for his love. There's a simple old school song that says, Love lifted me. Love lifted me when nothing else could help. It was his love that lifted me. Oh, love lifted me. Lord, love lifted me. Could help. It was his love Woo. that lifted, saved by his power divine, saved to new life sublime. Life now is sweet Woo. and my joy. Sanctify, believe, and lift your voice and say, For I'm saved. saved. I am saved. Saved by His power divine. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm saved. To new life sublime. Life now is sweet. I don't care what the media is saying. Life now is sweet. Woo! I got a higher savior. Life now is sweet and my joy is complete for saved. Pat yourself on your, put your hand on your heart and say, I am saved. Oh yes, I am. Come on, I'm saved by the blood of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, by the shedding of his blood. There will be no remission of sin. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for saving me. Yeah, hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. Yeah. You can praise God right where you are. If you're saved today, it's by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hey, thank you, Lord. Life now is sweet, and my joy is complete. For well, I'm saved, I'm saved. I'm saved, I'm saved. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I am saved. Oh, I'm grateful, Lord. I'm grateful, Lord. I'm grateful, Lord. Oh, yes, I am. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for saving me. You rescued me. You rescued me. Yeah, Lord. Yeah. Thank you, 
you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for saving me. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. I am still here. It's by the grace of God. It's by the grace of God. Hallelujah. That we have today. Glory to God. Today we remember the sacrifice that was paid for us. The sacrifice that was made. My God. Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me. Oh, that's love. That's love. That's love. It wasn't the nails that held him there. It was the love that he has for us. Ooh, glory to God. I'm trying to keep myself together. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus <laughs> and all that he's done for me, hallelujah, my soul cries out, hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you for how you've allowed us the opportunity and the privilege to praise and to worship you. Our adoration is to you today, oh God. Our adoration is to you. You are an amazing God. Ah, you're an amazing God. And we thank you for how you're carrying us through things that we understand and even things that we do not. And oh God, this time of uncertainty all over the land, the one thing that we can rest assured in is that you are God and beside you there is no other. God, we thank you now even for your healing power. Hallelujah. Oh, you're not dead. <laughs> you're yet alive. Oh, God, we thank you. Thank you for how you move, oh, God, and thank you for how you do what you do. I pray, oh, God, that those that are listening, oh, God, wherever they are, that they've made a sanctuary for you, a safe resting place, oh, God, that your glory might be revealed. Father, have your way. Have your way, oh, God. Have your way, oh God. You know just what we need and you know how to give it to us. We receive today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. There's a word from the Lord. Hallelujah. This is my favorite Sunday of the year. Amen. Resurrection Sunday. This is why there is a church. Glory to God. I'm continuing in the I Believe God series. Hallelujah. Mm. I believe God. I believe God. Hallelujah. Our reading this morning is coming from the Gospel of St. Matthew, the 28th chapter, and we'll just be looking at two verses of Scripture for your consideration. That is verse 6 and verse 7. Amen. You can follow along on your monitors. The sixth verse says this. He is not here. Hallelujah. For he is risen as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly, the seventh verse, and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him. Lo, I have told you. Some of you are old enough to know what that is. When I was a little boy, the television went off at midnight. And we would see on our screen before the national anthem was played simple message from the American Broadcasting System. We interrupt your regularly scheduled programming to bring you this breaking news. Ah, there has been a turn of events. That's my thought this morning. Breaking news. There's been a turn of events. Things are changing. Please be seated. Yes, sir. Amen. Thank God for his word. And if you give me just a few moments, we're going to walk through this together. Glory to God. There has been a turn of events. 
Friday, Thursday going into Friday, the situation that Jesus was facing was bleak and dreary. It was gloomy, my God. He was spending a little time with his disciples, and we call it the Last Supper. Spent some time with them, and he lets them know that the time has come that he must, my God, close his earthly ministry. The time has come that his assignment on the earth has been fulfilled. He tells his disciples, but and, and, and there's a couple more things that are going to happen. In fact, one of you is going to betray me. They took turns going around the table asking the question, Lord, is it I? Lord, is it I? Am I the one? And the Bible says when Judas asked, he said to uh, him, he said, thou hast said. You've said he was letting Judas know that I know that you're the one who is going to be my betrayer. Judas goes on and does what he does. Matter of fact, Jesus tells him in one of the gospel writings, he says, what you do, do quickly. While they were leaving from the upper room where they had the Passover together, the Last Supper, Jesus is on his way to Gethsemane. If y'all just walk with me for a few minutes, glory to God, we're going to get there all together. On his way to the Garden of Gethsemane. Gethsemane uh, in the Hebrew means the place of the pressing. We find Jesus going to the place of the pressing at the foot of the Mount of Olives to spend some time with the Father, knowing, my God, that his end is coming, his death is imminent. My God, the Pharisees were already planning how they were going to capture him, how, how they were going to arrest him and execute him. Their plans, my God, were already working out, but they needed somebody on the inside to make sure that they knew where Jesus was and to get him to them, and that happened to be one by the name of Judas. While Judas is out doing his business and collecting his payment, Jesus is in the garden praying and he took three of his disciples with him, those that were closest, Peter, James, and John, and he asked them to pray with him for a little while. He knew that this was not going to be easy. He, he was facing a bitter assignment, but the assignment had to, to happen. He, he had to complete his mission on the earth. Uh, listen, when uh, Jesus is praying there, he, he comes out to check on his disciples to see what they were doing, uh, and he finds them asleep. He's a bit disturbed because those who should be most concerned about me, those who know me, know my God, what I've been telling them all this time is now happening and it's unfolding before our eyes. My closest friends, can you pray with me for a little while? It, it, it's sad when we find out many times and then it's when oh my God, when the weather is bad, hallelujah. We, we have fair weather friends, they'll be with you as long as things are good and as long as things are going well, but when bad weather comes, when our times come, we'll find out who our real friends are. Jesus goes back to pray again, and when he comes back, he finds them asleep again. And I don't want to be too hard on these disciples. It had been a long week. <laughs> it had been a long week. A whole lot of things had happened uh, uh, that led up to this point, and Jesus spending his last hours of freedom with them. They were asleep. This time he looks at him and he just says, sleep on. Uh, because the truth of the matter is, uh, there's some things that we have to go through by ourselves. There's some things and some places where we cannot take others with us. My God, Jesus knew that he was the one that was going to have to die. He was the one, my God, that the Father had chosen. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. He prayed. The Bible says until sweat like great drops of blood ran down his brow. He's praying at a time of agony. Father, let this cup pass from me. If it's your will, uh, uh, can you change the situation here? Can, uh, can it be so that I won't have to go through this like I'm feeling it? And, and, and can it be different? And, and the Father doesn't respond to him. Jesus had to keep praying until he prayed out of himself. 
until he prayed past the flesh and got into the spirit. There are times when our prayer and the urgency of prayer has to get to the point where we have prayed past ourselves, realizing that the mission, your assignment, is greater than your feelings. Oh, my God. Jesus prayed until he prayed to the point of submission. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Oh, my God, I'm willing to drink this cup. And by the time he finished praying, my God, the soldiers showed up with Judas. And uh, Judas points him out. Oh, my God. And they asked the question, who is, uh, Jesus asked the question, who do you seek? They said, we're looking for Jesus of Nazareth. We're looking for the one who calls himself the Messiah. We're looking to the one, for the one who's been wreaking havoc in our communities and wrecking the theology of men. We're looking for the one who is damaging the world system in the order of what we already know. Jesus says, I am he. And the Bible says they fell out like dead men. He, he spoke because he had already tapped into the spiritual realm. He had switched gears in the garden. When he got to the point of resolve, he was no longer dealing with the flesh that he was in, but he was dealing with his spiritual self. He said, I am he, he spoke with such power and authority that the men fell out like dead men. Oh, when they're revived, they get back up and they ask again. And this time he says it in a natural voice, one that they could understand. I am he. My God, I think I would have left running. Glory to God. But they stayed and they captured him and they took him away. And the Bible tells us about how he went through all of these mock trials. He, he first goes through religious trials. He's going to see uh, Caiaphas and he, he goes to see the Sanhedrin. and He, he goes to see those that were the, 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 the religious leaders who were uh, criticizing him. And they really didn't have anything on him but the fact that they didn't like what he was saying. They sent him over to Pilate. Pilate, you're the leader of the day. We need you to make a decision. They understood that capital punishment was not ever anything that the Jews were allowed to do. They wanted to pass it over to the civil authorities and uh, let them make the choice. And uh, they understood that at, at the time of the year that somebody would be pardoned. So they bring before him, my God, Jesus and Oh, my God, the one, the son of the flesh. They, they bring him in and they tell the people, choose one. Now, mind you, these are the same people who just last week were celebrating and calling him Hosanna, the king of the Jews. They, these were the ones who were just saying how wonderful he is. And now they're saying, crucify him. There's been a turn of events. He didn't come and do what I thought he should have done. He didn't show up the way that I was expecting him to. He came, and there's now a turn of events. And people's hearts were turned away from this Jesus that they're celebrating, and now they say, crucify him. So he goes through the judgments passed down. We find him, my God, after he's been charged, they beat him, my God. They, they beat our Savior mercilessly. But uh, Isaiah had already told us that, uh, but he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Oh, Jesus understood that there had to be some stripes in order for those all the way down in 2020 suffering from the things that we are to know that it's by his stripes we're already healed. Glory to God. He took the stripes that we might receive the healing. And so we find him after he had been beaten, my God, flesh torn from his body. Oh, my God, he's bleed, bloody. Glory to God. He's got a crown of thorns on his head. And they couldn't just put the thorns on his head. They had to mash him down to, to cause him even more pain. And Jesus now, my God, they stripped him down naked, carrying his own cross through the streets of Jerusalem. On his way to the place of the skull. 
going to Golgotha's hill to hang on Calvary. He's got his cross and they carried him through. There's been a turn of events. This one who was looking so glorious and grand just a few days ago, one who had so many followers behind him, so many that were naming the name of Jesus and believing what he said, all of the miracles, all of the signs, and all of the wonders, and now things have changed. There's been a turn of events. Ladies and gentlemen, may I please have your attention. <laughs> Jesus fulfilled his assignment. He's hanging there on the cross. And on Friday, we talked about the last seven signs of Christ on the cross and how there was darkness over the earth for the span of three hours, my God. And while he's there, there's a turn of events. Four things that I want to tell you this morning and in in my points to ponder. These are your carry away. Jesus died to disarm Satan. He died to disarm Satan. What does that mean? Uh, disarm him. Glory to God. He disarmed Satan by going to the cross and suffering for me. Disarm Satan. And once he does that, the Bible says that the keys of death, hell, and the grave are in my hands. Uh, or the second thing that he does is interrupts sin. Sin had been on a continuum from the days of Adam and through the days of Jonah and, and the days of, excuse me, Noah, the days of men in the flesh, oh God, doing what they were doing without even the permission of my God the Father. They were making offerings and they were being excused, but here Jesus comes to interrupt the flow of sin. <laughs> he comes to be the remedy or the answer for sin. The third thing is he comes to expel fear. He came to wipe away, to annihilate false evidence appearing to be real. He came to expel fear. The fourth thing that we find Jesus does is he came to destroy death. Oh, this is why he died. The Bible lets us know that death was the last enemy, the final enemy, my God, for Jesus to combat. The final enemy. And when he does this, he says, Oh, death, where is thy sting? And oh, grave, where is thy victory? He comes, my God, to destroy death. This was an enemy to man from the beginning of time. And now he says that death is no longer an enemy. Uh, death is no longer anything for you to fear. I said he died. He, he died. He disarmed Satan. He, he died. He interrupted sin. He, he died. He expelled False evidence appearing to be real. He died to destroy death. We'll find, my God, what Mark says, as this journey from the cross to the grave and then back to the Father. We find that Mark says in the 15th chapter, and Jesus cried with a loud voice and gave up the ghost. I'm taking you back to the cross. He gave up the ghost. And the Bible says, and the veil of the temple was rent in twain from top to bottom. Oh, I want you to hear what the word says. And when the centurion which stood over against him saw that he cried out and gave up the ghost. He said, truly, this was the Son of God. He is now convinced this same one who was there and ready to see Jesus die. He didn't really know what he was looking for. Oh, yes, he died. He died. But I want to tell you about the veil of the temple. This veil in the temple being rent, torn, my God, from top to bottom. What significance does that have for us today? Understand that Jesus came to 
tear down the middle wall of partition. He came to move the thing that separated man from God. He came, my God, and he walked the works of what the Father sent him to do. He came to, my God, move the separation. He came to answer for the thing that held us back long enough. He died that we might live again. Oh my God, the veil of the temple. Understand that it was covering the holy of holy. The veil of the temple covered the most holy place in the house of God. That one place that nobody was allowed to go into but the high priest. He told my God that one place, the holy of holies, that one place where God showed up for his people and where God gave answers and that one place that only had room for one person Jesus died to make sure that you too can have access that you can have access to the holy of holies where you can see the father face to face for yourself where you can feel the presence of God and know that you know that he has God is real. Yes, God is real. Some may doubt. Some may scorn. Some might leave you all alone. But you've got to know for yourself. Yes, God is real. Yes, God is real. For I can feel him in my soul. Say yes, he's real. I know he's real because, my God, he touched me and he made me whole. Oh, the veil of the temple that covered this one place that was 30 feet wide, 30 feet deep, 30 by 30 by 30. This one place where the cherubims that stood 15 feet high, side by side, with their wings touching one another. Oh, this was a place, the most holy place. Hallelujah. This was a place where God showed up, where God made his presence real. The veil of the temple had to be wide enough, had to be long enough to hang there so that everything in the holy place remain covered. Glory to God. Glory to God. The Bible tells us that this curtain was so heavy that it took 300 priests to hang it. Took 300 men to hang the veil. It's 30 feet wide. 30 feet long and the Bible says a man's hand breath thick how thick is that oh a grown man the width of your hand is five inches five is the number of grace five fingers to remind you that God's redemption at Christ expense is why you have grace. It's why you have God's unmerited favor. Somebody give God a praise. Hey, hey. Woo. Since I told you what the number five means, I may as well tell you that 30 is the number of dedication. 30 is the number of redemption. God had a plan all the way from the beginning. When you look at the Holy of Holies, you've got to see that there's been a price. There's been a price that was paid for you. I had a debt that I could not pay, but he paid a debt that he did not owe. That's why 
steps home. I've been redeemed. Oh, I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed. Yeah. Glory to God. So here, the veil of the temple, that long, that wide, that took 300 men to hang, they knew that nobody had went in and tampered 30 feet high, even with the giants that we know. There's nobody who ever lived that's tall enough to tear from the top to the bottom. They say that the veil of the temple was so strong that it would take two horses pulling in opposite directions to cause it to tear. But while Jesus is hanging there between us and glory, while he's hanging there, he cried out with a loud voice, Father, can you do what you said you would? Can you take this blood? Woo! Can you take this blood that's already been shed to wash away the sin? Can you take these bones that have been broken? Hey, hey. Woo! And use it for your glory. Somebody shout hallelujah. Yeah. Glory, glory, glory. The veil of the temple was torn from top to bottom. The door has been opened. You've got a way in. The door's been opened. You've got a way out. The door's been opened. You can go to the Father whenever you need him. I can call him when I need him, and he'll show up for me. Glory to God. Glory to God. Woo. Hey, this message wouldn't be complete if I didn't get Jesus off the cross. Get him to the grave. Where are you going to bury him? He didn't have a grave sign already picked out. He didn't have a family plot. He didn't have, oh my God, a place to lay. As a matter of fact, he tells us, oh, with those that said they wanted to follow him, are you sure you want to do that? He said, listen, I don't have the Son of Man does not have a place to lay his head. The Son of Man doesn't have a place to call home. Oh my God, do you really want to go? Oh, Joseph of Arimathea, he shows up for Jesus and he says, I've got a new tomb and I know you won't need it long. I'll just let you borrow it for the weekend. They put Jesus' body in Joseph's new tomb and he stayed there. Hey, glory. He stayed there. He stayed there long enough to go and preach down in hell for those that were waiting on the promise of the Father. While he's there, we find in the songs, lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lift up the everlasting door for the King of glory shall come in. What was he doing while his body is laying in the grave? His Spirit is down there preaching. He's running a three-day revival. Somebody shall go in his heart. Who is the King of Glory? He's the Lord, the Lord God Mighty, mighty in battle. Who is the King of Glory? He is the Lord. 
strong. He is the Lord. Mighty. Hallelujah. Hey, hey. Woo. Hey. Set David free. Set Abraham free. Isaac and Jacob. Those who are waiting on the promise. They're released. And a few days later, the Bible tells us that they walk the streets of Jerusalem to testify that here is the Son of God, the one that you crucified, the one that you killed, the one that you buried. You couldn't keep him down. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where's your victory? You've been robbed. It's been confiscated. It's been repossessed. She is got up, dangling keys. And he says, death, the keys of death, hell, and the grave have been given to me. Hallelujah. Hey, give God a praise. Hey, hey. Guess what? He's coming back again. He's coming back again. He's coming back again. The same Jesus is coming back again. And he's looking for a church without a spot or wrinkle or any such thing. Hallelujah. It wasn't the nails that held him there on the cross. It was his love for his father and God's people. Hallelujah. He had a mission that had to be completed. Oh, there's been a turn of events. The king of kings is dead. What are we going to do now? Remember how he said, destroy this temple. And in three days, I'll raise it up again. Hallelujah. He's raised it up to new life. Glory to God, to new life. He died that we might live. Another turn of events is when he returns. When he returns, triumphant, to rapture the church back to himself. Bow your heads right where you are. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ and the pardon of your sin, this would be a great opportunity to give your life to him. To give Jesus your life. Turn your heart over to him. You can pray the sinner's prayer. Lord Jesus, forgive me of all of my sin. I believe that you are the son of God, born of a virgin, that you came into this earth hung on the cross for me and you died but you didn't stay dead you rose again on the third day you rose that I might have an opportunity to see you in peace if you prayed that prayer and you believe that the Lord is coming to your heart you've welcomed him and you've invited him and given him a place to reside the Bible lets us know that you're saved it's by confession of your mouth that he is the risen Savior, that you're saved. Then comes the process of sanctification and purifying yourself, being reconnected to the Father, going beyond the veil to that secret place, to the Holy of Holies, and connecting to him. Hallelujah. What a marvelous thing. For those that are just desiring a prayer, you're with your family and your friends where you are. Hallelujah. You may not be able to touch or to hold hands or to connect physically, but in the spirit realm. Father, whatever it is that needs to be connected and corrected, oh God, I pray that you'll do that in the name of Jesus. 
give us life and that more abundantly. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to, before you sign off, take advantage of the opportunity to give, to sow into the good ground of Sherman Memorial Church of God in Christ, the historic Sherman Memorial Church of God in Christ. If this ministry has been blessing you, you owe it to yourself and to the Father to sow back. You can give online. There are several opportunities. You can go on our website. Amen. Or you can type into your browser onrealm.org forward slash Sherman Memorial forward slash give forward slash now. Follow those instructions on your screen. Or you can text to give on your mobile device. Text to that number 73256. And follow very closely the instructions. After you type in that text in the message field, you'll be typing Sherman Memorial, C-O-G-I-C. Sherman Memorial, Church of God in Christ, no spaces, all one word. And then type stewardship, the dollar amount that you're, that you're wanting to give. Now, if you want to change that, there is a drop-down menu. Once you type that message in, it will take you to the next place, and you can change that to whatever field you desire. But we'd love for you to help us and to support the continued giving. Amen. God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. God bless you. We want to thank you for joining us today in this worship. You're welcome to join us again. Historic Sherman Memorial Church of God in Christ. Be blessed. And I might be set free. Exchange your life for mine. What a wonderful thing. What a wonderful thing. at 1401 Parkwood Avenue in the city of Charlotte, North Carolina, 28205. You can follow us online at the historic Sherman Memorial.org. Historic Sherman Memorial.org. Amen. Our live stream broadcast will be joining you again next, next week at 1045 a.m. You can also follow us on Thursday evening, TNT. If you go to the website, the instructions are there. I want to say to you, Happy Resurrection Sunday. Happy Easter. Welcome. Oh, bless his name. Thank you.